Hello and welcome to the disaster. Um, I think that's the only word that we can actually describe this. Uh, so what happened? Um, I was filming portion of the video where I um, am putting oil onto the cutting boards and I have my special technique where I put them in a vacuum chamber and suck all the air out to get more oil into the wood. So now let's take a look at uh, <laughs> let's take a look at that part and then I'll tell you what went completely wrong. So what is an oil bath? Well, as the name suggests, we have a vessel, but instead of filling that vessel with water, bath salts, bubbles, etc., we fill it with oil. And I'm gonna be using the pure and unpolymerized tongue oil from Finico, which is great for food contact areas such as cutting boards. So once we filled our vessel with the oil, we place our boards and submerge them into that oil bath, hence oil bath. I've done something similar with my pen cases and I'm gonna take out a shot from one of my previous posts about doing exactly that, which is, you know, dipping it into a well, smaller vessel, uh, submerging it for a couple of seconds underneath and then taking it out. The one advantage that I found is that all the areas of that cutting board get coated evenly, as opposed to me trying to uh, pour oil somewhere and then start it to spread it around then one area will absorb more the oil is going to spill somewhere else I have to wipe that area so it becomes a big mess and for me doing things in one shot is best so I'm going to be using that oil bath method uh, the other thing I'm going to do with the uh, cutting boards is subject them to a vacuum and what that does is it's gonna remove all the air from the pores of the wood, thereby forcing in more oil into the wood. And more oil equals more protection. I am going to be testing my claim by taking the weight of each board before and after the uh, oil bath and vacuum treatment. And any increase in weight will be attributed to the oil inside the pores of the wood. The two things that I needed to figure out is this. Number one is buoyancy. Wood has the tendency to float to the top of surfaces like water and oil. So I need to find a way to keep it held down to the bottom submerged uh, in the oil bath. And the other thing is I needed to figure out how to prevent the air pressure around my vacuum from collapsing the vessel. If I insert that vessel, in my vacuum bag right now, then uh, all the air pressure around it once the vacuum is created is basically going to deform and potentially break and if there is oil that's going to spill everywhere inside my bag. Uh, just a, a fun fact, at sea level under 100% vacuum, air pressure exerts about one kilogram per square uh, centimeter which kind of is equivalent to 14 pounds per square inch of weight. And that is, uh, as you see, a pretty big area on which that vacuum is going to act. So I've built this little box that is going to serve as a protection. Uh, it has a few holes on top of it. I know I cannot see it with the camera. I need to kind of zoom in. Uh, but it has little holes so that once the uh, vacuum is created, it's going to withdraw the air from the box itself and thereby creating that vacuum that I need. But with all that uh, 14 pounds per square inch or one kilogram per uh, square centimeter acting upon the uh, large unsupported area of the box, there is the potential of collapsing the box itself. Uh, and for that, I kind of think I have found a solution which will also find my solution to the uh, buoyancy problem. So once the uh, boards are inside and under the oil, I can simply add two pieces of my sacrificial uh, sticks that I created for gluing the uh, checkered board patterns. And I'm gonna place them in strategic locations so that when the air pressure starts acting upon the box and they push the lid down, they push against uh, this little piece which will push against the bottom of my board same thing here and keep it down and at the same time provide that necessary support at the center right here and prevent it from collapsing 
So, now that we know the theory, let's do some practice. chamber and I definitely showed in the video that I was aware of potential disasters and a way to resolve around them uh, sadly the measures that I implemented didn't work and in about 10 minutes into the process and 10 minutes into the uh, vacuuming oddly enough shortly after I turned off the camera and I was ready to go out uh, the top lid of the vacuum chamber collapsed and I think the force actually broke the, uh, the bath container or the, uh, the container where I put the oil in. I didn't know at the time because everything was hidden um, but my main concern was to prevent oil from going into the uh, my vacuum pump. I mean it's a $2,000 vacuum pump so if it gets oil in there it's gonna be a complete mess and a complete write-off uh, so that was my main concern save the vacuum press uh, vacuum pump sorry vacuum pump uh, everything else I can live with you know minor disaster minor setback uh, so I uh, slowly opened up the bag of course not knowing that this has broken because it was uh, under uh, this vacuum chamber which is not see-through and as soon as I touched one of the pieces of the, um, of the vacuum chamber, all the oil spilled out or began to spill out. I, uh, I was quick enough to lift the lower lip of my vacuum bag to prevent the oil from spilling down, but then my oil bucket had its lid on and I was trying to wrestle the lid on of the bucket with one hand which obviously didn't work and during the wrestling process probably my hand slipped and let <laughs> a good chunk of oil just fall onto the bucket with the lid on and of course you can imagine that everything spilled around around it. I uh, found a way to secure the lower lip to prevent any further loss and I was doing this uh, oil wrestling, mud wrestling, whatever you want to call it, if it's so slippery. And it took me about 10 minutes just to get the lid off the, um, the bucket because it was that slippery. Uh, I've used all kinds of instruments, all kinds of tools. But once your hands are that greasy, once the bucket is greasy, everything just slides around. Uh, anyways, I managed to get the bucket open, I dumped the remainder of the oil, whatever I could salvage off the bag in there, uh, but as we can see, uh, probably about a third is just gone onto the floor, and probably still remainder in the bag, and some left in the uh, unfortunate uh, bath chamber right here, which I'm going to empty quite soon. Uh, so now I have to clean up this mess, probably do some rearranging. Uh, the vacuum bag is completely, uh, how should I say it, uh, it's completely uh, ruined. I'll see if I can uh, find uh, a way to clean it up, but it's highly unlikely it's going to be any, any successful attempt. So probably it's going to be a write-off. Worst part is those bags are only available in the States and now with that pandemic I can't really go to the States and bring them and see if there's any uh, way to ship it. Um, so that would be something to do in the future, not right now, not immediate priority. 
but sadly that is going to delay my the finishing of my cutting boards. Uh, I was planning to do them this and next week, but after this uh, I have to figure out what I'm going to do first. Uh, so uh, what else is a write-off? So my vacuum chamber is a complete write-off, the container is a complete write-off. Um, I have to... Probably my shoes are a write-off. I'm standing on a piece of rag to prevent myself from slipping around. Uh, and yeah, that, that's about it. Now I have to uh, complete the cleanup and see what is salvageable, what isn't. Anyways, if you didn't like this video, <laughs> make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so that uh, maybe next video or the next few videos ahead, you actually get to see the uh, proper way of doing the vacuuming or the oiling of the cutting boards. Make sure to follow me on all social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, my Google page. Uh, and, and yeah, that's it. Uh, have a good weekend. I definitely am going to be oily. So this is the extent of the damage to the container. So a completely ripped side. Here as well, this side isn't too bad, but I'm quite surprised that it did this. So this is the section of the lid uh, that kind of imploded, so it went all inwards. Even though there was a support right here in the center, uh, I see that also the supports broken, I'm not sure if they broke first and then everything else or uh, what happened I mean like I said everything was I thought everything was nice and secure but yeah this is part of the lid another part of the lid more of the lid so yeah, everything just went kaboom inside everything imploded so yeah so cleanup is nasty Nasty, nasty.